you know, it, it's, it is devastating, but you know, I, I, I don't think it should be surprising really to anybody, you know, I, you know, anybody who has taken the, uh, the initiative to, you know, read the final report of the truth and reconciliation commission, anybody who's taken the initiative to read the uh, final report of the, you know, murdered and missing indigenous women and girls report, will know that, you know, particularly at residential schools, you know, lots of children went missing that never made it home. And so, you know, we shouldn't be surprised. Um, and I, and I, I hope actually that uh, if this uh, latest revelation uh, can motivate Canadians who don't have an interest, who don't take an interest, who maybe hold biases uh, that are you know completely ill-informed about First Nations people and uh, what what this country has done to First Nations people, their culture, their language. Uh, I hope that it, 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 it motivates more Canadians to read these reports, to understand what really happened, and to, and to understand that reconciliation, yes, it's important for the government to do a lot of different things, and we've got a lot more work to do at the government level, but reconciliation is something that has to happen in the hearts of all Canadians as well. And, I, and I'm, I'm just as guilty as the next person I was mayor of Huntsville when I first started to really take an interest in, uh, in, in, in First Nations culture and history. And I, and I reached out and, and met with uh, the chief of Shawinaga, the chief of Wasoxing, and the chief of Rama, which are the three nations that used to, you know, use the land that Huntsville now sits on. <clears throat> Uh, and it started it's it started an eye-opening learning for me that is continuing and i just hope that more canadians choose to learn and understand what we've really done scott on, on the federal level because there's been talks about the catholic church's involvement in this would you support calls to the catholic church to to take some responsibility or at least um accountability for this scenario well, I, 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 think it's, I think it's important for all those involved to be accountable. Um, and of course, you know, the individuals involved in many cases, no, you know, are no longer alive. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think it's important to remember, though, that, um, you know, the, the, the Catholic Church was, you know, working on behalf of the government to deliver what they thought was a service. Um, and, and um, you know, I, I think one of the one of the requests is that the Pope actually come to Canada and apologize on Canadian soil. Uh, and, and I think the Pope has resisted that. Um, I, you know, there has been an apology. Um, I, I guess I guess what I worry about is that is that all too often we get hung up on, you know, expecting somebody outside, you know, expecting somebody from somewhere else to come and, uh, you know, and, and, and do something uh, when it really falls to all of us to do something. Uh, and that is to take an interest, that is to understand, and that is to heal these wounds. And, and uh, apologies are important, but action matters too. Uh, you know, I, I give the, the current government some credit as they've done a lot of work to, uh, to eliminate things like boil water advisories that still exist in this day and age, if you can imagine. Like just if you give that just a little bit of thought, they've done a lot of work, but there's a lot more work to do to eliminate boil water advisories on first in First Nations communities. That's disgusting. That's disgusting that that exists today in one of the richest countries in the history of the world. It's disgusting. And and so, I again, I, I give this government a bit of credit because they've worked they've worked at it. But um, all too often, it's uh, you know it's it's grand promises, but, uh, you know, not as much action and deliverabilities. And, and every, government's, every government is guilty of not doing enough of, of liberal and conservative stripes. So I, uh, I hope that, you know, this is one of those, this is one of those times in our histories as a, as a nation where 
uh, more Canadians stand up and go, you know, not doing enough is not enough anymore. And they hold their governments to account. And just finally on this, Scott, there's been calls to, to really bring these, these uh, history lessons into the classroom. And it seems like we're, this country is constantly being haunted um, by our past that is being, um, you know, um, paved over constantly. Um, would you, again, support the idea of, of bringing, horrific as it is, this history into the classroom so that people, are, children are learning of, of all parts of Canadian history? Absolutely. Absolutely. I Listen, I remember in elementary school, I think it was grade seven, where we first had a, a, a unit on uh, Canadian history that touched on First Nations peoples. And it was mediocre at best. It was mediocre. And, and this is how I came to be an adult and not really know what we've done. What, what, what our society has done. And so I, I think it's absolutely crucially important because I, I, again, I don't think there can be reconciliation without, without us knowing our past. And I certainly didn't know our past. And I, I know that there are millions of Canadians that don't really know the past. I think it's important for us to truly know what happened, what was done. Uh, and, and honestly, I think it's important for us to understand uh, how all those heinous crimes that were committed against First Nations people have caused generational harm. That's important for all of us to understand. And, and honestly, you have to understand that history before you can start the healing, before there can be true reconciliation.